Okay, so we're still doing basic console applications. We're still in week three, and we're on to the next question, and another textbook question. So this question says, write an application that prompts the user for the month, day, and year. So we're gonna get the user to enter the month, day, and year, and display a message that specifies whether the date that they enter is not this year, is an earlier month this year, is in a later month this year, or is in this current month, okay? So, um, and we'll call it past, present, future dot Java. Okay, so let's just do that first part. File, save as. Okay, we'll call our class that public class. So that matches the file name without the dot Java. <clears throat> public static void main. You're getting used to this so far. You should be <laughs> static void main. Should have written a many of these so far string square brackets args should be coming second nature hopefully now okay so prompt the user to enter a day and month and a year so it's three pieces of data the user's got to enter so let's declare those int day month and year and they're all integers and we're going to be using scanner to get input so scanner kb equals new scanner system in just like we've done many times already we're using the default system input device which is a keyboard wrapping that up in a scanner class object so that we can use next int and next double and next whatever we need to do so okay for scanner we need an import import java.util.scanner all good and um, so we're going to compare it to today's date whether the, whether the enter date is not this year so we need to know what this year is we need to know what uh, the current month is, and so on. So let's have a look at our Java help, and we'll see what we're there to find us, what, what we can do, what we can do to get help there. Uh, the, the second part of the question says, look at the look at the bully, look at the local date class. So we'll do that as well. But let's start off just looking at dates in Java. Well, let's do a bit of exploring. Uh, date util .date. So there are methods here that take. Uh, that you can pass in a year, month, and day, uh, but they're called they're marked as deprecated. Deprecated means you can still use them, but you shouldn't really be using them. They're they're being phased out, so they're not guaranteed to be there in a future version of Java. So there's a lot of these useful methods in there that are all deprecated, which is a bit of a shame. Um, what else have we got? So we can declare a date, and we can get the month, we can get the the year. That's deprecated. That's deprecated. So all the, all the useful functions get month, get year, gets, get minutes are all deprecated. We might still use them because in the second part we're going to be going on to local date, which is a lot a lot uh, more better for doing this sort of stuff. Um, so just about all of the functions that are useful in <laughs> um, the date class are all deprecated. Set year, set month, and that are all deprecated. So not much there we can use. Um, but we might use them anyway. Even though they're deprecated, we'll still go ahead and use them. Okay, so um, we can get the current year, date, date equals new date. So we're declaring a date object, which we haven't done dates yet. We've done it. We've talked about them in the shoots. We've done a little bit of work on them, but not not too much. So we're using dates for dates we need to do for dates we need to do an import, and I'll show you the Java help as well. So right at the top up here, it's got what you need to import Java util dot date. Okay, so see that that's where you get the imports from. So we can actually copy that, paste it in there. Put a semicolon at the end and we've got our import ready to go. Okay, so date, and we can get the current month, current year, current day equals date dot get. And let's have a look at those functions again. Scroll down and it's uh, get day, and that returns the integer for the for the for the for the, for the um Oh, so that returns a one, two, three, four, five, depending on the day, right? Eh? So we don't want that that, that one. We want uh, get get year. We definitely want get month. We definitely want day of month. So get date returns the day of the month. By the look of it, returns the day of the month between one and thirty-one. Okay, so current date is get date. That gets you the day of the month. Int current month equals date dot get month and int current year equals
will state dot get year. Okay, so even though these methods are all marked as deprecated, we shouldn't really be using them, but we're only using them for a two questions. So we're not using them for an important project that's going to be rolled out to many people or in, and be cutting edge or anything like that. We're just doing a two question, so it's okay to use these for a two question, even though they're deprecated, being phased out. They could be there, and they could still be there in ten years' time. It's just deprecated means they're they're being phased out sometime. So don't don't use them in in serious new projects, uh, but they could still be there for ten years, twenty years. Like, there's no guarantee how long they'll be there. They could be gone next year. Okay, so so we've got the current day, current month, current year. Now we need to prompt the user to enter the day, month, year that they want. So system will prompt the. I'll do some pseudo code. Get a date from the user. Day, month, and year. Okay, so that's what we want to do first, and then we want to compare the user date. So user's date. To the current system date and then display some sort of message and the messages are specified in the question up above so I'll have a look at that have a look at that again shortly uh, so really that should be year and not years just fixing that up this is getting the current system date just to put some more comments in okay get the year from the user so we're going to prompt the user to enter a date uh, system dot out dot print line. Now the question says prompt the user for a, a month, a day, and a year. So they're entering three pieces of data. So we'll just prompt the user for a month, a day, and a year. And enter day on the month and year. Three integers. So we're just telling the user what to enter. And so we've got our keyboard object there, our scanner object, KB. So our day. And we're assuming that the user's entering things in the right order, day, month, and year in that order. So that'll be kb.nextint to get the next integer from the user from the keyboard. And then we've got month. And then we've got year. Okay, so we prompt the user for three bits of data, three integers. We're assuming the day is the first one, the month is the second one, and the year is the last one. So we've got the three bits of data from the user. Then it's just a matter of comparing them and displaying the message that the question asks for, or the messages that the question asks for. Okay, so we've got all these messages here, so I want to copy all that text there and just, just copy it out of the question, just to save me some typing, and I want to paste it down below. Okay. So I'm going to paste it down here just to help me out. <laughs> okay, so, and if the, the year the user entered is not equal to the current year, current year, then we can display that first message, system.out.println, and we'll display not this year. Okay, else, then we're going to go on to the next part. So now we're going to compare the months. Okay, so if the month the user entered is less than the current system month, which is that current month there, then we're going to display a message to the user and it's going to be in a month earlier this year. Okay, so that's that one. So if the, if the years don't match, we do that message else if we're in this part of the the uh, else structure then the years must match because we're in this part if the years don't match we're in this part okay else if if the month is greater than the current month so the month the user entered is greater than the current month we're going to display the message uh, in a later month this year there it is so we display that part okay and the only other, only other thing left to do is else, if the months match, we're, uh, we're in this month. Okay, so if, if the years don't match, we display not this year. Else, so the years must match if we're in this part. If the month the user entered is less than the current system month, we're in an earlier month this year. Else, if the month is greater than the current month, so the month the user entered is greater than the current system month, we're in a month later this year, else, and we're uh, in the current month. 
Okay. So we don't need to say else if the months are equal or if month equals current month. We don't need to do that because that's the only other option. If it's not less than and it's not greater than, the only other option is that they're equal. So we don't need to put the else if there and say if they're equal. And that's about it. So let's just check the question. We're, we're generating all that. That's all fine. We've got all that coming out. All the, all the correct messages are coming out. I'm not sure whether we're supposed to be putting out the four and the three and the two. I've left those in there just for a bit of fun, really. And now we just want to comment this out or d delete that. Okay. Um, and that's basically it. So we'll... So let's compile. Control one. And you'll see an interesting message come up here. And if we look at the message, it says, uh, you're using or overriding a deprecated API. Okay, so Java's telling you you're using something that's been deprecated. Remember we saw those messages in the help? If you want to recompile with recompile your code with the minus xlint command line parameter, then you can see what the exact issues are. And if you go up here to your tools menu, external tools, actually we do configure first, configure preferences, tools, compile Java. If you put it uh, a minus x, uppercase x, l-i-n-t there, and go apply, we can now compile our code and see what the see what the issues are. So let's click in there and go control one, and you'll see Java actually tells us what the issues are. It's the get date, the get month, and the get year. But we knew that because we saw it in the help. But I'm just showing you how you can get Java to tell you what the messages are. Imagine you're compiling thousands of lines of code, and it's a lot of someone else's code, and you're not sure what's going on. This lets you, that excellent parameter lets you find out what the, the real nitty gritty is. Okay, I'll go back and turn that off because it can get a bit annoying because it tells you about every little issue in your code, even when they're not issues. <laughs> so generally you just leave that turned off, but that's how you can turn it on. Just put a space there, minus uppercase X, L-I-N-T, lowercase L-I-N-T, and then Java will tell you every little thing that's wrong with your code or every little thing it's not happy about. Not a bad thing to do. Quite often I add another compile option, so I've got compile Java, and then I had another compile option saying compile with Xlint, just so I'd say I can compile with that when I need to and not and not the not the rest of the time. Okay, quite a good thing to do anyway. It's very easy in TextPad. So now if I compile, I just get back that original message. Okay, and we know what that means because we've seen the extra messages, and uh, we've, we've we know that we use those functions there, and they were marked. Oops, and they were marked as um, deprecated here in the. A lot of these ones are marked as deprecated, which means being phased out sometime in the future. Okay, uh, and that's about it for this question. We can run. Control 2 and, and run our code. Whoops. Control 2. You've got to make sure you click inside this window uh, when you're running. Otherwise, you're going to try and run this output, which won't run as a Java program at all. So enter a day, and it's now the 25th of March. So I'm going to enter the, um, the 29th and... 3 and 2020 not this year Ooh, okay current year not this year okay so I wasn't expecting that but what we can do to display some more information let's display all the data to the screen shall we so we'll display system dot out dot print line System date is current day plus plus current month plus plus current year. So we're just displaying the data separated by minus signs or hyphens. Okay, and then we'll do that as well for the, the data the user entered. So, user's date, or user date, whatever you want to call it, and that's going to be day, month, and year. Um, and not much I can do about that wrapping on the next slide, I can expand that a little bit I suppose, but it um, doesn't really matter. Okay. So let's see what happens. Control 1, and then click inside this window again and go Control 2. And I'll enter 25-3-2020. So the system date is showing as 2. And the year is showing as 120. Okay, so I've got to look at those functions there and see what they're called, see what they're giving me back. 
Hmm. Okay, let's have a look at that health file. Date. Util date. Get. Get month. And that returns, oh, that returns a number between 0 and 11, so it's one less than the month number. Okay, so to convert to convert the month number to a to a month from one to twelve, so that gives a one to twelve month. Okay, so it gives us a number from that gives a number from zero to eleven. So we want to add one on, one onto it to get one to twelve. Why does it do that? We'll talk about that more as we go in the course, but uh, it's something like we'll talk about a little bit later. Get year. Get seconds, get time, before, after, equals, compared to, we've got a whole lot of stuff in there we can use, we should be using. Um, get seconds, get time, get year. Um, returns a value that, that is the result of subtracting 1900 from the current year. Okay, what a strange thing to do, hey? Eh? But anyway, that's just the way it works. So it's subtracted 1900. So if you want to get the the actual year plus 1900 okay get month 1 to 12 get actual year okay so you got to be careful when you're using some of these functions they don't quite work the way you might expect okay so I had to add one to that one and then to add 1900 onto that one which is a really funny thing to do but anyway Right, control one, click in this window again, control two, 23, 2020, and where this month, that's what came out. Click in this window again, control two, control two. Okay, let's enter uh, 05, 12, 2021. So I'm entering, I'm entering a, a, a future year, and it says not this year, okay. Control two. 20 28 2020. So I'm currently in March, so I've entered eight there, so I'm, I sh should see uh, it's a future month. Is a month later in this year. Yeah, same thing. Okay, so that's working well. It's a bit of a strange question. There's many other ways we could have done it. There's uh, many other functions in the date class we could have used, but that's just the way I thought we would answer it for this attempt at the question. But there's other ways you can do it as well. So if you have a look at your date help in here, you can see there's other interesting methods as well. For example, you can pass dates. You can convert dates from strings into um, uh, into actual dates, and then you can do things like um, you can call the equals method and uh, and all that sort of stuff, and and compare to to compare dates. So instead of comparing the bits of the dates, you can compare the dates as a, as a whole. But I've gone this way because it wanted to check the years first and then the months and so on. So anyway, uh, that answers the question. I think we're right for the for part A. Uh, we might have a look at part B. So part B says, have a look at the web to learn about local dates. And there's methods like is before, is after, in equals. And there is in this in the date class as well we've just been using. Um, so let's have a look at local date class. Local date is very useful. Uh, it's got a lot of methods in it and they're not all deprecated like the date class. So local date. So it's a little bit strange to use. You've got to say local date of. Um, local date of. Where is that? Down here. Yeah, there it is. Off. And then you pass in a year, month and a day. And then once you do that, you can do things like um, uh, you, you can add months and years and weeks onto a date and days and things. You can subtract months, years and whatever from a date. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff you can use. You can do with. You can compare them. You can see if they're equal. Uh, what else? You can get the the month and the year and the month value and that from the. From the date as well so all the things we've just been doing with with dates um, you, you can you can do that with local dates as well and there's a lot more functionality in there and it's not all deprecated so that's probably a good way to go um, will we answer the whole thing we might, we might make a good start at part b and i'll get you started so let's now 
or use local dates. Okay, um, so I might comment all this code out. Slash star, and down to there, star slash. Actually, it's really only that first part we want to comment out. So we're using local dates, not, okay. So local dates, you do an import for those as well, and it's right at the top. Just go straight to the top of your Java help, and there it is. So it's java.time.localdate. An import for those. Import Java dot time dot local date. Oh, already had it in buffer. Sorry, I should have just pasted. Okay, so we're not going to use dates anymore. So I can I want to comment that out to make sure we're not using dates anymore. So I've commented out all the date codes. It's all commented out. So local dates are a little bit different. Local date date equals local date dot of. Okay, so we're using that local date of method. And that's this chap here. Scroll down, scroll down. There's so many methods. LMNOF off. There it is. And you pass through the year, the month, and the day of the month. The year, the month, and the day of the month. Okay. Year, month, and day of the month. So three integers. That's that one there we're using. So we'll pass through the, the year, which is... Ah, sorry, so this, this is a system date, um, uh, current date, now, so we're getting the current local date, and then we'll get the, the year, month, and day from that. Sorry, this is the current system date, sorry. And that's current date dot, and we go up to these get functions, get month and get day of month get day of month returns the value from 1 to 31 get day of month get day of month uh, the month one get month and this one here see the month value returns the value from 1 to 12 so we don't have to add one onto it so that's what we want to get. We want to use that one. Get month value. And that gives us a value from 1 to 12. Good idea to put a comment in just so you can verify that you've checked that. <laughs> and then current date uh, for the year. Get year. And does it do that funny? Dis it doesn't look like it does that uh, subtracting 1900 thing. So I think we can trust that year. We'll check it anyway. So get year. Get year. Okay, so now we've got the... We're using the local date to get the details. And, uh, and now we can just go through and compare the dates as before. So nothing else has changed. So instead of using date here, we've changed over to local date. There are other methods as well. You can use is before and is after and equals and all that sort of stuff. But we it didn't want us to compare the dates. It wanted us to compare the years and the months, not the actual dates themselves. So there are these methods here, but they're for comparing whole dates, not for comparing just whether the years are equal. Okay, so we won't really be able to use those in this question. Um, oh, actually it changes it then. It says, don't, don't display all this stuff anymore. Just display whether the date's in the past. Okay, so it does change the question quite a lot. Okay. Um, prompts the user for a day, month, and year, and it just displays a message specifying whether the entered date is in the past. Okay, so we might do that a little bit differently. Um, so we've got our local date details there. We've got our prompting for the for the date there. I don't know where the year went. Year equals, I must have deleted it. KB next end. And all we want to say now is whether the year's in the past or not. So Maybe we don't need to do that because we're not comparing the years and the, we're not comparing the years anymore and then the months anymore. We're just going to compare the dates. Okay, so we're not actually going to compare. It doesn't say to compare it anymore by uh, compare the years and see if they're equal and then compare the months. So we'll just get the local date and then we'll get the day, month, and the year from the user and we'll use that to construct another local date object and it's called users date, whatever they entered, equals 
local date dot off and this is where we provide th those three numbers to the method and it's the of method let's scroll down and have a look at the of method with no, they're not in order sometimes and there it is there the one that takes the three integers okay so we pass through a year month and a day and that will construct a local date object for us so we pass in year month and then a day and now what we can do is just compare current date with user state so it's much simpler we're not comparing the years first and then the months next and and all that sort of stuff um, so I'll take out that last one because we don't actually have the oops, we don't actually have the, the day month and year for the current date anymore because we've commented that code out for now so all we want to all we want to really say now is if user state dot is before and we'll have a look at the is before method let's go back up to the top is before there it is uh, is after is before so we pass through another local date object and that checks if the dates before the other one okay so that's what we need to do we need to pass through another object as well so here's an example using it local date a equals local date of local date b equals local date of then you can say if a is before b so we're going to do that sort of thing see so so if user's date is before the the current date or current system date equals true then we're going to display Is, is before the current system date and uh, else if is after and we can say is after the current system date otherwise the only other option if it's not before and it's not after they've got to be equal so there's no need to say if they're equal we know they're equal user state equals the current system date okay so we've done a bit more than the question asked there it said just display message specifying whether the enter date is in the past or not so we've done a bit more than that we've said whether it's in, whether it's in the future before the current date after the current date or equals the current date so we've done a little bit more but that's okay hey it's always good to explore and take things further than the question actually asked local ah sorry sorry it's not local it's local date how do i how do i leave off a local date Local date, local date, local date. So I had it there, but not there. Okay, so. Cool. And control two. So today is the 25th of March, 2020. So I'll enter the 21st of February, 2020. And it should say the user's date is less than or before the system date. User's date is before the system date. Cool. Let's do another one. Let's do... Let's do the 25th. So today's date is the 25th of the 3rd, 2020. The user's date equals the current system date. And 20, 28th of the 3rd, 2021. So I'll do next year and it should say is after the current system date. So that's working perfectly. Okay, so we did things two ways there. For the first part of the question, we got the user to enter the, um, the parts of the date. And then we compared those parts of user entered to the current system year, month, and day, and these if statements here, this if structure, okay. And the second part was actually a little bit easier in some ways because it was less code, but we also had to delve into the world of local dates, which might be a little bit scary the first time you see them. There is a lot of methods there that are very powerful. I highly encourage you to explore these because they've some very useful stuff in here. You can. Add, add days and weeks and hours and things onto dates and subtract days and weeks and hours. Uh, you can see if they're equals. Um, you can get the length of things. You can check if they're leap years. You can do a whole lot of stuff. There's so many methods. Okay. And that's basically how to use them. So you say local date current date equals local date now. That's the current system, the current system date time. And if you want to construct your own date, 
you can do that as well. Use the state equals local date of, and then you can you can pass in the year, the month, and the day. Year, month, and day. Okay. Then you can just use methods like is before, is after, and and those sort of methods to compare your dates. So it's they're brilliant stuff. Anyway, this turned into quite a long question, so I might leave it there for now. I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to do lots of exploring and coding and uh, and solving various problems and you'll become good in no time. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.